of Cincinnati where they came back from 15 down and then Kansas on Saturday. And Billy, Michigan, Coastal Carolina, back from 19 down against UCLA. George Washington and Temple, they trailed in those games. And the overtime victory against Kentucky. Now for the starting lineups. The voice of the Final Four once again this year. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Frank Bellman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the Louisiana Superdome for tonight's NCAA National Championship game between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Michigan Wolverines. And now let's meet the starting lineups. For North Carolina at forward, a 6'6 junior from the Bronx, New York, number 31, Brian Reese. For Michigan at forward, a 6'9 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number four, Chris Weber. For North Carolina at forward, a 6'8 senior from Roanoke, Virginia, number 34, George Lynch. For Michigan at forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Austin, Texas, number 21, Ray Jackson. For North Carolina at center, a 7-foot junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 00, Eric Montross. For Michigan at center, a 6'9 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Jawan Howard. For North Carolina at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Garner, North Carolina, number 21, Donald Williams. For Michigan at guard, a 6'5 sophomore from Plano, Texas, number 24, Jimmy King. For North Carolina at a guard, a 6'4 junior from East Elmhurst, New York, number 14, Derek Phelps. And for Michigan at guard, a 6'8 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 5, Jalen Rose. And the coaches for North Carolina in his 32nd season, Dean Smith. For Michigan in his fourth full season, Steve Fisher. Billy Packer, how about your game analysis? Well, Jim, there are going to be so many factors in a great game like this that uh, people are matched up so well. So let's take a look at some that I think are really important. The Blue Collar Special, I'm, of course, talking about two outstanding players in there, George Lynch and Dewan Howard. 14 points a game each. They're brilliant basketball players and great competitors. Head to head. The 0 threes, a new record for a Final Four win for a team. Michigan was 0 for 4 against Kentucky from threes. They're going to have to make some tonight. William Shadow, we're talking about Donald Williams, who has averaged 18.6 points a game in the NCAA. He's been their leader in scoring 12 times, but he's going to have Jimmy King and Ray Jackson. They'll be shadowing him tonight. And the seven-foot subs, I'm talking about Salvadori and Riley. Both of those players are very key here because Montross and Weber will have to sit some. The officials, Ed Hightower, sixth consecutive Final Four from Alton, Illinois. Tom Harrington from Chico, California, his fourth Final Four. Jim Stupin from Cypress, California, in his second Final Four, the alternate Andre Patilla. I wonder if George Lynch repeated his message to his Tar Heels. Same message he gave them on Saturday when they broke huddle. Lynch said to his teammates when they took the floor, let's win this for Coach Smith. Jim, those two guys matched up in the center. I'm going to make a prediction. Whatever one plays the most minutes tonight, their team will win the game. That's Weber Montross. Weber said, I don't want the silver ring they gave us last year. I want the gold that says number one. And the team in gold, Michigan, has it first in the championship game. Straight man to man. Matchups as we expected. Montross and Weber down inside. And there go those double team traps for North Carolina. It's Weber, three-pointer. Short, but on short and it's Lynch with the rebound not surprising he's led the Tar Heels in rebounding three straight years and a little change for Michigan they're going to put Juwan Howard down there on Eric Montross to get the double team from the backside from Weber and Weber blocks it Jackson blocks it the next time off of Reese and Phelps touched it last two blocks one by Weber and one by Jackson now, Jim, there's the strategy, and what what Eric Montrose ha has to realize here, Juwan Howard will play him straight up. Chris Weber is going to shield him coming over 
to trap and double team him down in low. A pass will be available to whoever Weber's guarding. That's George Lynch. Michigan let Jimmy King bring it into the front court. Jalen Rose now driving on Williams. Lynch with his second rebound. There's North Carolina typically, as they do, allow you to drive that baseline to get weak side help. Phelps off the glass for the game's first two. Phelps had an excellent game against Michigan in Hawaii at 15 points. He doesn't need to score big for them to win, but he has to keep his man honest. Brian Reese said he could be our MVP and not even score a point. That's how valuable Derek Phelps is to our team. Montrose staying in front of Weber. He'll be looking for the lob. Michigan trips. That was just a smart play. George Lynch timed it perfectly. At the other end, Montross follows and scores, and he'll shoot one. Jim, one of the things that's happening right now for Michigan, they're not playing their own man solidly. They're counting on help from a guy from the weak side to come over for the block. And consequently, as I said, if Weber goes over to help on somebody else's man, his man will be wide open. Jimmy King fouled him. Montross, such a perfectionist. That's what Dean Smith was talking about to us after the Friday practice and you know he had 23 points as we see Eric Riley the seven footer come in for Michigan replacing Chris Weber Montrose such a perfectionist he had 23 points Saturday against Kansas but said I missed five shots so I'm not happy now look at the top of the screen and watch they turn off the giant screen here in the Superdome while they shoot free throws they didn't do that in 82 and 87. It comes back on during, well, during game action. And in 82 and 87, the free throw percentages, Billy, looking it up, were in the 60s. Here's Saturday in the mid-70s. Well, without question, not only is it light, Jim, but it's moving light, and that's what would really affect the shooter. So far, North Carolina really playing up tight in the ball, making the passing very difficult to see an open man inside. Nothing if you go baseline. Charging on Ray Jackson. Again, it's George Lynch at the defensive end for North Carolina. Jim, I, re I think the reason, and we'll see again, as I said, North Carolina forces you to go baseline. They count on the end line being another defender for you and always get that weak side help. I think the reason Chris Weber was taken out of the game so so quickly, I think he's hyper so so much that he's losing sight of what his assignment is. Steve Fisher wants him just to sit for a minute. Williams, long rebound to Jackson. King ahead. Tight lead. King will go against Williams. He's fouled on the way up. I think in the act of shooting, in fact. So two free throws for Jimmy King. And Jim, another thing you have to think about in a championship game with only one day rest, which team had the most taken out of them in the previous game? Sometimes you can play so hard, and we know what the answer to that is right. in terms of what Kentucky did to extend this Michigan team. So far, Michigan a little slow getting started. King for Michigan's first point. And I think back uh, to your alma mater, Jim. Houston against Louisville. What I thought was the most physical, maybe the greatest uh, semifinal game as far as athleticism I've ever seen. And it took an awful lot out of that Houston club. Here's Weber right back. They settled him down. And see if he doesn't change his philosophy defensively now. Play a little more solid on his man. Nice move by Steve Fisher early. Just want to get Chris Weber's head on straight. Almost five. He got five. Nice defense by Jimmy King. Talk about the defense, Billy. Jimmy King played on Saturday against Travis Ford in Kentucky. Well, the thing that was so amazing is that you could see Travis Ford early on in that first half. He only got off two shots, and early on, he was just totally frustrated because King shadowed him so well. And here you can see Lynch making the pass to the post so tough. Jalen Rose gives it up last minute. Weber underneath for the first field goal for the Wolverines. And he looks down Eric Montrose as if to say that's the first of many. Montrose tries to ignore him, but he certainly got the effect. Can't let him get that open inside. Both are great finishers in a low post. Two great defensive clubs here. Reese, 
Weber was on him. Back to Montrop. And a foul called against Ray Jackson. Jimmy, see Chris Weber down inside. Now, he had a great game, of course, against the University of Kentucky. But he did likewise against North Carolina the first time. 35 minutes played. He was 10 for 17. He had 27 points, 8 rebounds, 5 blocks. Just a monster game. And that is the second foul against Ray Jackson. Angry because he knows he must sit now. Rob Polinka replaces him. Rob Polinka, the senior from Lake Bluff, Illinois, a member of the 89 championship team for Michigan. The only member, huh? The only active member. Riley and Bosco were redshirted that year. They got to make the trip with the team to the White House and meet the president. Similar but to Rex Walters from Kansas the other day. Got a chance to work out with a team, but not an official member. Yeah, 91. Yeah. yeah. Paid his own way. and had to pay his own way. Right. Now look for a trap on this dribble. Here it comes. All the way across the court by Williams. Oh, he threw it away. Over the head of King. Now, Jeff, uh, absolutely cardinal rule when you play North Carolina. When you cross half court, you must keep your dribble alive. By not keeping the dribble alive, it invites the trap. No place for Rose to go because he couldn't penetrate. Trouble. On trot, blocked by Weber, his second of the night. Into the hands of Reese, and a blocking foul called on Weber. Great effort by Weber, but he just couldn't get there in time. He has really settled down now, playing solid defense. Look at how well he times that jump against the seven-footer. That's the first on Weber and the fourth team foul against Michigan. Carolina inbounds underneath. And Jim, North Carolina, it's incredible how they can get the foul line. Back screen for George Lynch. Dewan Howard looks around and says, somebody talk to me. And he's still talking to Rob Polinka. Now see, that time Jalen kept his dribble alive. 9-4 North Carolina. Rose, too strong off the glass. Montross secures. The difference is that Jalen got those off against Kentucky, those running one-handers. It's not happening against the size of North Carolina. Carolina turns it over. A whistle under 16 minutes. And look one more time at the lob to Lynch. Carolina has held Michigan to only one field goal in the early going. Scaled it, jumped it, skied it, surfed it. Rode it, dove it, flew it, crashed it. Never slammed it. Never guzzled it. You've never done nothing till you do diet do. Did it. Dug it. Savored it. Relished it. Hey, man, let's do this again. Lasers. Satellites. Cellular data networks. What exactly are we preparing for? UPS introduces Total Track, the only tracking system that can confirm delivery of your air and designated ground packages coast to coast in seconds. Package was signed for at 9.26 this morning. The arms race may be over, but the package race is just heating up. If you depend on your truck to last, here's news you should never forget. Of all the Chevy trucks built in the last 10 years, over 98% are still going strong. At more than Ford, more than Toyota, more than Nissan. Over the years, no other truck is that dependable, foreign or domestic. Only Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Imagine this is an 800 line. If a network cable cut blocks your call, AT&T's FastStar reroutes them. So you're back on track in minutes. One of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. Imagine a deodorant that keeps a man feeling as fresh as this. Introducing Van for Men with a clear shield of protection that fights odor for 24 hours. So feel this clean, this fresh. Try new clear Van for Men deodorant.
the greatest players of today, leaving a legacy for tomorrow. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Eric Montross has five, Billy, and the Tar Heels controlling the rebounding right now. Well, they really are. Eight rebounds to two. They out-rebounded Michigan in the first game, and so far in the NCAA tournament, Jim, they have out-rebounded their opponents by ten a game. But they haven't played an opponent that can get on the boards like Michigan. Michigan a little slow coming out, though, Jim. Not, not the same foot speed and intensity they had against Kentucky. But it's so early. Michigan picks their offense up higher now. A 1-4 set. They're looking for a back screen and a lob out of this. Malinka, three-pointer. Got it. They didn't make one against Kentucky. That's their first of this final four. Rob Palinka. Well, that wipes out one of our four keys to the game. They've got to make a three, so one of those is, is now done. Lynch fires at the Phelps. Nice cross court. Good help by Weber. Lynch on the baseline. Oh, good block out by Jimmy King. Montrose couldn't get to the ball. Four on two. Weber back to King. Over to Rose. Palinka sets up for another three. Good. Rob Palinka, and that's why Steve Fisher says he's become our top perimeter sub. Jim, that's why Steve Fisher is 17-2 and two in the NCAA tournament. I mean, he pulled the trigger quickly to get Palinka in there, set him up for some shots. And Michigan has the lead. Sullivan thought about it. Williams will take it. Good follow through, but nothing there. Five men down in the lane for Michigan, and they still can't get the rebound. Rebound to Jimmy King. 10-9, Michigan. Those threes changed the tenor of the game. You can see a little worried look on a North Carolina player's face. Jalen Rose, three in a row. Nine straight points on three. That'll turn it around. You don't have to get rebounds. You make those. Montrose down low. There's a triple team on him. Hook too strong. King with the rebound. Polenka. Good passing. Howard with a two. Weber kicks it back out. He's so unselfish when he gets the ball inside. Excellent passer. The last three trips, nine points. Weber driving. No contact or no, no foul on the contact. And score the bucket for Chris Weber. North Carolina totally out of sync right now. See if they get back to their offense. Williams has not gotten on track. There's a switch by Rose. Leaves Williams open. Williams to Montrose. Missed the dunk. Oh, no, it falls in anyway. Breaks the 11-point uh, run by the Wolverines. That was really a breakdown by Michigan, Jim, because Rose didn't aggressively make the switch, so that allowed Williams just to have a head start. Palenka. Good fake. Puts it up. Too strong. Weber. That's going to count. Drag to the floor. That was George Lynch, one of the strongest forwards in college basketball, who had Weber right around the shoulder, and Weber was so strong, he was able to take it right up, and now, Jalen and he are really going to have, that's called the lecture. You can watch it right here. I thought that Blinka got fouled, but watch the strength that Weber has being pulled to the floor and still softly put it up on the board. There was the contact inside. Weber. There's Lynch pulling him down, and he still put it up. Weber gets two for the basket. Does Lynch get two for the takedown? <laughs> well, well called. This is a tremendous run by Michigan, doing it on the offensive end of the floor. And that's that. What? I thought Howard was going to get a cheap one, and now Steve Fisher, another very crafty move, realizing he doesn't want Chris Weber in any foul trouble, brings Riley in there with a the lead. Up seven, he'll rest his big guy for a while. Weber goes out with seven points, 14 to two run in the last three minutes for Michigan. And Jim, keep up with that. Who plays the most time? See, the other thing Steve Fisher got out of this is Eric Montrose needed a rest. I think he feels that Riley can beat Salvador. Oh, the whistle takes away the fast break for the Wolverines. They call a reach in on Jimmy King. That's his second. Two on King, two on Jackson. In that matchup, Riley and Salvador. In the first game, Riley played 17 minutes, had seven points, four rebounds, two blocks. Salvadori played 10 minutes, didn't score, didn't get a rebound, and had five fouls. So Steve Fisher has to feel comfortable that he can get the better of this matchup while Montrose and Weber are out. Henrik Rodel in for North Carolina. Number five, out of bounds off Michigan. I 
haven't seen North Carolina this confused on the offensive end of the floor in a while. Those three-point shots took away a lot of concentration. Reese driving on Rose. Great penetrating move. Made all East Regional. Good Reese. Michigan as opposed to let's say a Rhode Island where he was very effective off the bench is the Michigan players have his size but they have so much more strength normally when he comes in off the bench he's playing against maybe a 6-7 player and at seven feet he can get by with but watch here he doesn't even phase Juwan Howard he puts his hand in and Howard's just too strong for him Steve Fisher going with the seniors, huh? Look at this. Indeed. Pally coming in. Michael Talley coming in, but you see the senior for Carolina first, Lynch returning. Lynch for Sullivan and Talley for King. Michael Talley for Jimmy King. Talley was the second leading scorer on this team the year before the Fab Five arrived, and two time Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. And a three point play for Jawan Howard. Michigan shot very well, and it probably was the real difference in addition to Mashburn fouling out in the Kentucky game. Michigan did very well from the free throw line, a team that normally only shoots at 50, 65%. Three seniors from Michigan on the floor. Reese drives by Rose. Second time he's beaten his man. Riley with the rebound, snaps it over to Rose. Good pass. Oh, great. Rodel read it. Rodel read it over to Phelps. Tried to bounce it back. Riley read it. Michigan's got the numbers, three on one. Howard will challenge Salvadori. And that's a 10-point lead for Michigan. I think that North Carolina, Dean Smith is pushing up, but I think they need a timeout badly. Now, probably counting on a TV timeout, but really, this team totally out of sync. Next whistle, there will be yep. a television timeout. And he tries to save them. Ben Get, moves. Getting nothing inside. Here's Salvadori. Salvador. There's the whistle. Salvadori makes his second free throw. Carolina will get its timeout. Television timeout, that is. And Salvadori coming up with a big offensive rebound here, Billy. Very good, but he can't finish it off on the inside. So many bodies, and you can see that strength. Weber in for Jawan Howard. And Montross will be coming right back in to counter that for Salvadori. Salvadori, who arrived at North Carolina, is a 6'10", 205-pound freshman. Remember him talking to us about eating six meals a day? Grocery bill costing $350 a month. He still couldn't put the weight on. Which so many of us in America like to know his formula for keeping it off. Two free throws cuts the deficit to eight. But Michigan leads it 23-15. If America had never invented rock and roll, chances are it'd be something like this. Fortunately, we did. Redskin tube socks up to his knees ever made it to be the number one tennis player in the world. It's just not possible. That's not possible. It's possible. Life. Around every corner, financial questions, choices, surprises. When you need direction, 
the Principal Financial Group can guide you toward your goals. With flexible insurance, solid investment strategies, stability you can count on. No wonder people have been coming to the Principal for over a century. To secure your future, to get an advantage, get the Principal Edge. The Principal Financial Group. Get the answers to the most amazing questions. How do these parents care for nine children, all under 11 years old? How'd they do that? Find out Wednesday. Well, field goal percentages tell the story. In North Carolina, outside of the lane, only 1 out of 11 from the floor. And, Jim, we talked about North Carolina shooting over 52% in the tournament. Something would have to give. Michigan was holding its opponents down to 38%. And so far, North Carolina out of sync. They go to the zone for the first time. 2-3 zone, Montross in the middle. Lynch will run the baseline out of it, so it moves sometimes into a 1-3-1 look. Stolen right out of the hands of Riley. Stolen by Lynch. They're high-low, not as effective with Riley in there as Howard, because Howard has those strong hands. Lynch left wide open. North Carolina has brought in number 24, Dante Calabria. Looks like both coaches trying to rest as many guys they can early to have it ready for the second half. First time they played, Michigan led at halftime. You know, Billy, as many Michigan games as we've called the last two years, we've never seen the three seniors on the floor right now on the floor for this duration. No, and, and particularly not in the first half of the game. They didn't even play this much in the first half of the game uh, in, in Hawaii early in the year. Weber got it to go, plus a foul. How about threading that needle for Jalen Rose? against the zone, and I thought Juwan Howard made a very good point today when he talked about Carolina's zone, and they said, if they go zone, we will have to get the ball inside, counter to what a lot of people say, if you have a go against the zone, you've got to be a perimeter team, but they think inside first. Second on Lynch. Juwan Howard back in for Michigan. Weber in his matchup with Mashburn the other day, they were talking a great deal during the game, and uh, Chris talked about that. Uh, as far as what the dialogue was, and he said, I kept talking to Mashburn about when he comes into town next year when he's playing in the NBA and he's playing the Pistons, will he get me some tickets? <laughs> Which, of course, gives you the indication that maybe he'll be back next sounds, year. Sounds like a hint. Not his best-looking free throw either, was No, it wasn't, but he's not a good free throw shooter. Montrose there goes with a left-hand shot. Weber doing a great job forcing him to step out. Howard's pass picked off by Felt. He'll challenge Howard, and they say that Howard pushed him with the body. Well, what North Carolina is doing is certainly getting to the foul line an awful lot, but that's not unusual for them. They have made 249 more free throws than their opponents and shot 324 more than their opponents. Salvadori returns for Montross. That was the second on Howard. So two on Howard, Jackson, and King on the Michigan side. Two on Lynch for North Carolina. Real chess match in regard to the big guys. Uh, Montrose having the better of it so far, and it's the second time Dean Smith has... I mean, Weber having the best of the second time that Montrose has been taken out. Phelps said when uh, he was a freshman and they went to the 91 Final Four, he was all excited, it was fun and games, but it's been all business this week. Salvadori, good read down the offensive board. A pump fake by Reese, good hit inside. Fox Lynch. Now we talked about the blue collar guy. 1,500 points. His career, he's just tremendous. Second leading rebounder all time for North Carolina. Palenka. Oh, we finally missed one, Billy. Made his first two. Looked good, though, didn't it? Right on the mark. Another good rebound by Salvadori. Both ends of the floor. Lynch. Doubled up, had to throw it toward the basket. Malinka underneath for Michigan. Jim, I've said a lot of times, but I think Steve Fisher is teaching the double down from the weak side better than anybody in the United States on the college level. Paid off again for him. Man to man. Now, Phelps is stuck. Now Williams is stuck with Howard. Surprised they don't get him down low somehow. Bad matchup. There he is in a good steal. Valley's pass picked off, trying to go inside to Howard. Phelps over to Reese. Just nice drive. Move. That's Weber on a touch foul. And that's Weber's second. Touch foul 
Carolina is substituting very liberally. Both teams, King for Cali. And Lynch resting for North Carolina. Jim, the, Ryan the, Reese with two. The great tradition to these two schools, it's hard to believe they've only played four times. And we think back of one of those wins. Michigan's won the last two, but the one they won before the Rainbow Classic in the Southeast Regional, which propelled them on to the Final Four where they won their championship. North Carolina had won the first two meetings. That was in the regional semifinals. That's right. when Steve was the interim coach, and he told me yesterday that was his most important win. He said, once I got that one, that put me over the hump. Uh, uncertain whether he would get the full-time call. Well, it was funny to hear him introduce in his fourth season, and here he's been <laughs> to the Final Four over that five-year period. But I guess they say that first year he didn't coach a full season, which he didn't. Just coached six games. Yeah, six games. Six, and oh. <laughs> six pretty good ones and big ones. By the way, he said his second most important win was the first one against... Xavier in the first round, it was a struggle. He said, if I don't win that one, I don't get the job, for sure. Well, Pete Gillen gives a lot of people trouble in that first round. He's a guy that uh, certainly has done a fine job, and again, this year did. By the way, Fisher going for number 100 tonight. Trapping defense. Well, Weber gives too big a target for Williams down inside. Weber just eating him up there. Two players tipped it. Sullivan clears it for Carolina. Carolina has cut a 10-point lead down to three. Williams can tie it, he does. Jim, what really set that up is the Michigan backcourt players, Rose and King, drifted back towards half court instead of getting to the foul line for that long rebound. Rose. Sullivan called on the foul. There's not a player in college basketball that could have made that catch better than Weber. I mean, as well as Weber. Just incredible hands. They call them hands. That was such a I, bullet. I don't, I don't know I, how. He never I don't even know how he tricked it off. Bobbled it. Not a bit. Carolina on a 7 nothing run. The tide at 25. This is hydroplaning in less than an inch of water. And they're not being pulled by a boat. But by Goodyear AquaTread radials. AquaTread's deep groove design channels water away to keep more tire in contact with the road for outstanding wet traction. This is hydroplaning. This is AquaTreading. The all-season AquaTread only from Goodyear. It comes with a 60,000-mile tread life warranty. Goodyear AquaTread. Try a set. We like to say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Your other pizza. Oh, another one. Sandwich? Yeah. And wow. you also get... Let me guess. Dessert. Dessert. <laughs> but, but that... Get two medium, one-topping pizzas, a salad for four, even cookies. Dinner for four, just $13.99. A great reason to stop and smell the pizza. You forgot to pay me. We treat those trucks like we're going to buy each one. We build them like we're going to buy the next one coming off the line. We build a world-class truck. We care. We care what we ship. We care what people buy. Because if we didn't care, they'd never be back. The final product is beautiful. And I know if that truck's got that decal on there, I must be doing my job right. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting of trucks on the road. Do you know the national debt is almost $4 trillion? That works out to roughly $16,000 for every man, woman, and child in the country. Even the goldfish is into somebody for 30, 40 bucks. Relax, I'll float you alone. And with banks charging up to 19% interest on our credit cards, we're literally drowning in debt. No offense. This is the American Express card. No interest, no revolving debt. So you don't have to worry about going belly up. You're right. One too many. I didn't know he could do that. Piloting the Goodyear blimp is Dr. Jim Maloney from Vienna, Virginia. I guess next year he'll be flying over Charlotte. That's the site of the 94 Final Four. Looking ahead two years, Seattle. In this building, he might have he might have had his first indoor basketball game. You could almost get that blimp in here. Huh? It is so immense in here. Yeah. It has such a different feel than Minneapolis and Indianapolis, the last two sites. Back to the zone is North Carolina. Weber wanting him to reverse the ball and then lob to him inside. But Salvadori and Matrat, pretty big target. Backing it down, giving the three. King. Oh, boy. Michigan doing the job with three. Didn't make one against Kentucky. What's that, their fourth? That's their fourth. 
the city of New Orleans is accustomed to seeing three-pointers drilled in the Superdome, but they usually come from Morton Anderson. Well, you know, Jim, you think back, Steve Alford didn't do bad with the three-pointers the last time he was in here. Seven out of ten. That's right. Was the record before Williams uh, hit five out of seven, as did Rex Wallace, the percentage of three-point shots made. Sullivan. Sullivan did not hesitate on that one. Drains his first shot. Well, that's the shot Rick Pitino doesn't like, just inside the three-point line. North Carolina really picking it up now. Weber. As baseline stuck. Oh, offensive foul and not called that time. Weber got by with one. From the other side, King. Weber. Great hands yep. again by Weber. It's almost like he's got a magnum in there. That was good help by Sullivan. For Sullivan, the yeah. Tipped it back out. Two excellent defensive teams. The best in college basketball this year. Five count. Now, each team has been able to challenge for a five count in this half. Jim, on the year, Michigan holding their opponents to 41% shooting. North Carolina holding their opponents to 41% shooting. They played great schedules and outstanding competition. And I, I really do think they played the best all-around defense of anybody, and that's probably the reason that they're here. North Carolina with four starters, plus Henrik Rodel on the floor. Riley Montrose, I think Montrose can score on Riley down low. But look at Weber's hot guard and Lynch. He has to keep him occupied. He's keeping an eye on yeah. that Riley Montrose exactly. matchup. That one short, long rebound. Mark Weber didn't box out. And Lynch took right. advantage. See, but what Chris Weber's trying to do is guard two people. He's trying to help out on Montrose almost as his primary responsibility. Lynch, too good a player to do that to. Carolina has regained the lead, 29-28. Dean gives it up. Three men around Weber. Oh, Lynch, another great rebound. Rodel from the reverse side. Again, how many times have we seen it? Rodel, the German Olympian, used that rim to shield the defender. The only Olympian on the floor tonight, although two players helped train the U.S. Olympians, and here's a steal by Lynch. I think he'll take it against Weber. Awkward shot, rebound to King, and Phelps picks his pocket. It's a nifty ball handling, giving it up to Rodel. In this sequence, all you needed was Montrose to throw up a three from there. North Carolina really out there to draw some fouls. Michigan basketball. Jawan Howard will come in for Riley. That was a frenetic sequence of events right there. Maybe Montrose would have been better off taking the three at the top of the key. North Carolina on a 13 to three run. Rose, quiets Carolina for the moment. 31-30 Tar Heels. Jim, Jalen, one of the few guards in the country because of his size, capable of going on that baseline. And cut by Weber. Two more stops for Dean Smith's Tar Heels. Salvadori Williams back in. It is inside, and it did. A great call by the official. We got a hard one to see. You can see from the angle he had there, it went right off Weber's... About his rib cage. So the two seven footers in for North Carolina, Salvadori and Montrose. They have another one on the bench, and Matt Winstrom. Three two points five. by Williams. Yep. And he was well short. Montrose ran him over. Eric couldn't get out of the way. And in that particular case, Williams realizing that Jalen Rhodes is the kind of guy that'll turn his head, worked himself free for the three, but was a little bit out of his range. First on Montrose, 16 foul, big double zero. The first to ever wear that number at North Carolina, although Dean Smith wore that number in high school. Smith, I got a kick out of hearing Dean talk about the difference from the 93 championship game versus when he played in 52 for Kansas when they won the title. He said they only got two tickets to the game and he couldn't find anybody to give them away to. <laughs> now you just can't get your hands on enough. 64,000 on hand here at the Superdome this evening. Good hands again. Team got caught, saved by Weber. Von Frost with two hands taken away by King. There's the difference. Weber's hands were too strong. Montross got the steal. Rodels. North 
guy ever to the lead, lead, to lead the scoring. nation in, in, in scoring and be, of course, he was the MVP of the Final Four that year. Took him to a championship. And to win a national championship That's the right. same season. And another funny thing happened. B.H. Bourne, the next year, Dean Smith played in the Final Four in 53. B.H. Bourne it did not score in the 52 game. Ended up being the most valuable player of the 53, even though he's on a losing team. A lot of history. From the Indiana Anderson. won the next year by Indiana a single won, point. Right. Dean, by the way, in the 52 championship game, played 29 seconds, although you might not find his name listed in the box scores. He yes. says, I have the film at home to prove it to you. I played 29 seconds. Which makes it unique. He, he and Bobby Knight, the only ones to play and coach in a championship. That's right. Ball time. Carolina by one. There's never been a better day to come back to AT&T. Well, how come you won't take me back? In fact, over 100,000 businesses have come back. Yeah, I'll make it 100,001. Come back to AT&T now, and your business, large or small, can get 100 days free. Oh, my whole career is a small business. Come back to AT&T, the best in the business. Oh, come on, will you? Even my wife took me back. I mean, not for long. <laughs> oh, she'll hear from me, too. The Mercedes-Benz 300E claims to go from 0 to 60 in 8 seconds. The Lexus LS400 says 0 to 60 is a mere 7.9 seconds. And the BMW 535i publishes a top speed of over 140 miles per hour. But based on those numbers, the Seville STS with the North Star system blows them all away. The Seville STS by Cadillac. Michigan early on. 
Montross in and out. Lynch in and out. An official's whistle. I wanted to just clear a, a, a sub, an earlier sub. So it's a one-point North Carolina lead. There's Jalen Rose. She's got to concentrate on where Williams is. Doing a better job on this sequence. But I think North Carolina wants to lose it. There he is. Montross, there's that double down. Reese 